Today we are going to have a look again at Galatians 3 at another very important teaching um, and, and that we will find um, in uh, Galatians um, 3 near the end. So let us have a look there. So here at the end of Galatians 3, um, in verse 28, it says this very important scripture. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, in our previous um, studies of Galatians 3, and about um, who is the Israel of God, we saw that, um, that Jesus is the seed of Abram, and everybody who is in Jesus is, uh, is part of the Israel of God or the children of God. And then we also see that... Um, we, we see that we are heirs along with Jesus. Um, and then we see that there is no separation anymore. Um, we know that in the uh, Old Testament, we, we read of the Hebrews and then the Gentile nations. But Jesus came to um, make uh, the... the um, the Hebrews who became basically the Jew, what we call the Jews and the Gentiles, he came to make them one in the uh, called out, um, what we call today the church. The biblical word is the ecclesia. So this is a very, very important teaching. There is neither Jew nor Greek, or we can say neither Jew nor Gentile, for all are one in Christ. Now, let us look in Ephesians 2, because there it explains to us how um, Jesus did that. How Now, if we look in Galatians 2, yeah, in verse, from, um, in verse 11, it basically says that we, the, the, the um the unbelieving um nations or what is called the gentiles are seen as what the bible calls far off but we were brought near by the blood of christ so there was a believing remnant when the messiah came and um and then also that there were um many of the the uh, lost sheep of Israel were scattered among the Gentiles. So Jesus came and he preached to the lost sheep and he brought them in. And Paul um, then was the one that, that went about uh, and also brought in the actual, the, the Gentiles, the, not, the people that were not uh, of Israel. So we know that it's by Jesus' blood that this is possible. But yeah, from verse 14 of, um, it's actually Ephesians 2. It's not, did I say Galatians 2 perhaps? Let's just say again, yeah. So it's Ephesians 2. And yeah, from verse 14, it says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So this is a very, very important teaching here um, that 
he it says Jesus came to make peace by breaking down the middle wall of separation um, and making one new man from the two. The two that he reconciled in one body is basically what we now nowadays call Jew and Gentile. So he made from, from the um the lost sheep of Israel and the and the remnant, the, the Israelites and the Gentile or unbelieving nations become one new man and is in one body. And he says that is how he reconciles them through the through the cross. So it's very, very important to see here where it says he broke down the middle wall of separation. So let us look again. It says here, yeah, neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, all one in Christ. How is that done? Now today we are just focusing on the fact of um, Jew and Gentile. Um, and in that case, he says to make the two one, what did Jesus do? He broke down the middle wall of separation. Now, what I want to say is what, what God, the, we read in the, the Bible and men often say what God has joined together, let no man separate. So we refer to marriage, you know, that a man will leave his, the house of his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they will be one flesh. So we can say that what God joins together, no man must separate. So we, we learn here in Ephesians 2, Jesus broke down the wall that separate um, Jew and Gentile. So he broke it down and he sit and he joined them together, much in the same way as what we say uh, in marriage, but it is in a spiritual sense, join them together to make one new man. So they are now joined together and we should not separate them. Now, if you go look at Galatians 2, it says there, um, in Galatians 2, um, now what I'm going to say here is not like a Bible teaching. It's just a... Uh, opinion of of myself okay so I want you to be very sure that I'm just sharing a little insight that I have I'm not saying this is a biblical teaching because I don't want to do that I I'm a, your fellow disciple and I want to try and say when something is just my opinion so that you can be a good, like a good Berean and test what I say. Um, and you should always test what everybody says, what I say. You should always test it by the scriptures. Right. So it says there, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners, is Christ therefore the minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. So that paragraph is about when I am um, when I, I am saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and I then fall back into the law and law keeping. Um, Paul says there, I make myself a transgressor because I build that which which I destroyed okay so this really jumps out at me for if I build again those things which I destroyed I make myself a transgressor now if we go again here to to Ephesians 2 it says there that 
uh, what did Jesus do? He broke down a wall of separation. He broke it down. He broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile. So if I now take, if I now believe in doctrines which again says um, at the end of the age, then God is going to work differently with Jews and Gentiles. Then I am actually doing this thing. Yeah, I'm building again those things which Jesus destroyed. Jesus destroyed that wall. It's done. It's finished. So I rebuild that. And th that is why Paul says, um, I mean, should I rebuild something Jesus destroyed? I, should, I shouldn't even, it says it's wrong if I build something which I destroyed. In other words, when I turned to Jesus, um, I destroyed that which was previously, and I shouldn't go back like a so uh, goes back to lie in the mud or a dog returned to its vomit. Now, in the same way, I should never, never, um, you know, rebuild this wall of separation. And this is exactly what happens in the doctrine of what we call Christian Zionism today which is a prevailing doctrine. And that says that, um, you know, the church, uh, these last 2000 years has been the church age, but now, you know, Israel is back in a physical land and now God is going to work with them again. But I am building again that separation. You see, I'm building again what, what Jesus came to abolish so this is really really an important scripture to help fight against that false doctrine because this um there's neither jew nor greek is actually a wonderful um it's such a short sentence but it it contains jesus christ coming to abolish racism and making able to make people one because in these last 2000 years it was not just that the the separation between Jews and Gentiles um was uh, abolished and they were made one body it happened over and over um for example when um Europeans went to Africa in Christ is able to abolish that separation between those cultures if if both cultures are prepared to um, become one in Christ and that that their traditions and the ways of their father they put aside and become one in Jesus you see then God is able to make them one new man, one new people, so they can become a Christian nation. And it is quite amazing. It is the answer to all this fighting that is going on now. Um, Christianity is, is accused of, of being racist, but it's actually the opposite. Jesus came to teach us the opposite thing, and um, that there is... These th to God is no respecter of persons.